Welcome to the Boxcar Press video on operation of the Heidelberg 10x15 windmill. This is meant to complement the manual, which you should download from our website. Uh, this is to help fill the gaps and show a few tips that we've learned at Boxcar Press for operating this press. First, we'll ink up the press and show how to check and set roller height. Take out the chase and bring the rollers down over the bed and use the roller gauge to see if the roller height is correct. You can consult our video adjusting roller height for more information. You can see here that our rollers are set too low, so we'll raise the rollers. There are eccentric cams at the top and bottom of each rail. Loosen the central hex bolt just a tad. Then tap the roller height adjustment toward the plus sign to raise the rollers higher. Don't loosen the central hex bolt too much or the adjustment will get too sloppy and hard to control. Then you can lock the hex bolt when the adjustment is ready. Repeat this for each of the rollers that need adjustment. Let's now set the press for gripper register according to the manual. We can move the cam that opens the gripper Disengage the pin that moves the lay gauges and center our press sheets on the feed table. With gripper register, everything aligns to the center of your chase. This is shown on your chase with a line scribed into the gripper edge. This helps align your plate using the grid lines on the surface of the base. Large adjustments are easily made by peeling and repositioning your plate. Other adjustments can be made on the feed table. Two bolts at the bottom allow us to pivot our sheet into register. By skewing the front standard one way or the other, we'll angle our sheet back and forth. First, we'll unlock both large hex bolts on the bottom of the standard. Then we can use a screwdriver to loosen one screw, then tighten the other in order to pivot the standard into register. We can watch this happen with the indicator bar on the right of the front standard. Here, we've pivoted the front register to be completely square. Gripper register doesn't allow for the most accurate registration, so for most printing, we use the lay gauges. We'll engage these by moving the press sheets all the way over to the left, re-engaging the pin that holds the lay gauges, and moving the cam that opens the gripper according to the manual. Plate placement with leg gauges. In general, you'll want the plate close to the feed edge, which is the bottom of the chase on the side with the gripper. Here again, large adjustments are easy by peeling and repositioning our plate. The 9x12 standard base fits well within the Heidelberg chase. The press has the most pressure in the bottom center of the chase, so if possible, position your artwork so that the heavier, more solid areas are centered, and areas of lighter impression are toward the edges of the chase. We'll drop in the chase and pull a few impressions. We have targets on our plate at either end to measure its registration. The feed side measures 57 points to the bottom edge, the tail end measures 56 points to the bottom edge. There are two screws called micro guides that we can adjust to square up a crooked sheet. By turning the screw clockwise, we could raise the bar holding the leg gauges, but in this case, we'll need to lower the tail edges micro guide. So we'll turn the screw counterclockwise. We'll put the screwdriver into the screw, loosen the hex lock bolt, then turn the screw counterclockwise before retightening the hex lock bolt. Another impression and now we measure 56 points on both sides of the form, perfectly square. On our sheet here, we notice that the bottom half of the sheet has more impression than the top. The bottom of the platen has hit the artwork on the bottom of our sheet too hard. It also makes the impression of the artwork at the top appear too light overall. We see this when the press has too much packing, and the extra packing causes the bottom of the platen to jut out too far. We'll need to remove some sheets behind the draw sheet to ensure the platen is more parallel to our form when printing. 
Open the draw sheet and remove your packing. A micrometer is indispensable to measure how much packing you remove. We've left a draw sheet and a make ready sheet on the press, which together measure 12 thousandths of an inch. The sheets we've removed measure 34 thousandths thick of packing material. Here, we're removing one sheet of a 100 pound cover and replacing it with two sheets of 60 pound text. We read on the micrometer that the packing is now 29 thousandths or 5 thousandths less. Pack the press again and make sure the packing is tight. Once we remove the packing, we'll have to increase impression on the dial to allow the platen to pivot closed more and to become more parallel with the form. Sometimes the opposite problem happens. The top of the press sheet is dark and the bottom hasn't gotten enough impression. This would happen when the platen is underpacked and the top of the platen leans forward as a result. If you have this problem, add more packing and back off on the impression dial so that the top of the platen isn't hitting your form too hard. Once impression is even, then you can add ink to even up the color from side to side. Looking at our sheet, we see that the flowers at the top corner are lighter than the flowers at the bottom corner. We put color bars along the bottom of our plate in order to see the color consistency side to side. Sure enough, the squares on the left side of the sheet are lighter, which means we'll add ink to that side of the press before starting to print. Getting a windmill to feed starts with fanning out our sheets with the right amount of blowing. These sheets aren't separating, so the gripper will probably pick up more than one sheet at a time, which can do all sorts of bad things. Below the feed table is a valve which we'll need to open. We actually only turn this off on envelope printing. When opened, the sheets are fluffed up and it will be much easier to pick off the top sheet. Too much blowing and the sheets might get caught up on the springs or not feed consistently. Let's turn the blower down slightly so that we're only fluffing up the top five or six sheets. You'll want the sucker bar to be at the same angle or tip back slightly more than the fluffed up top sheet. Adjust gripper angle with this wheel. We usually run our sucker bar between two and three depending on the paper stock. The goal is to peel the top sheet off the sheets below using the most angle possible. Too much angle and the suckers won't pick up anything. Once your impression is even, your ink is all set, and your paper is feeding, you're going to love printing on the Heidelberg windmill.